Hello, everyone. We appreciate you joining us today. My name is Cheryl Cage, and I am a senior security strategist at AWS on the Security and Compliance Partner Team. And our team runs the Global Security and Compliance Acceleration Program from AWS. And today, we are going to talk about high trust and the shared responsibility matrix, and then we're going to follow that up with um, some Q&A with Jerry and Ryan. By the end of our time today, we hope to provide more insight to help you streamline your high trust certification. And joining me today, I have the pleasure of speaking with two of our great partners. I have Jerry Miller, founder and CEO of Cloudticity, and Ryan Patrick, Vice President of Adoption with High Trust. So Jerry, I will turn it over to you for introductions. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, my name is Jerry Miller. I'm the founder and CEO at Cloudticity, where for the last 12 years, we focused exclusively on health, helping healthcare organizations uh, achieve success on the cloud. Um, we're an AWS premier partner, uh, and also high trust certified for many years. Uh, one of the things that we bring is the ability to inherit controls directly from our platform. And we'll talk about that um, throughout the presentation. So thanks for having me today. Happy to have you. And Ryan? Thanks, Cheryl. And uh, thanks for having me on. I'm always uh, excited to be able to uh, have these conversations with folks and, and get questions answered. Um, so as Cheryl mentioned, I'm VP of Adoption here at High Trust, and, and my responsibilities really reside in working with stakeholders in multiple industries, kind of understand what their current challenges are and how High Trust programs, methodologies, and solutions can help meet those challenges, or conversely, take those back internally and further develop and improve uh, what High Trust is doing. And High Trust is a standards development organization. So we've been in business for 15 years. We developed a framework that basically has harmonized uh, multiple other authoritative sources. So think about different regulations, laws, other frameworks uh, into one homogenous uh, framework that you can use to report out against all those others. So um, happy to be here and I'll turn it back over to you, Cheryl. Well, thanks. We're happy to have you both and I think this is gonna be a great conversation. So Ryan, I don't know if you want to add any more um, detail here on, you know, high trust CSF and, and you know what that involves, and then I'll go into some of the a AWS pieces. Yeah, sure. So I, I touched on it, touched on it at a high level. So high trust back in 2007 developed a framework really designed to help answer the questions that people had around the HIPAA security rule. Uh, HIPAA you know, historically was very subjective, it wasn't prescriptive, it wasn't really answering the questions that folks had in how to be quote unquote compliant. Uh, so the founder of the High Trust Alliance went out and developed a framework and developed these controls that uh, are very prescriptive. It actually answers the questions on what types of controls you should have in place, but not just the controls in place, but the maturity of those controls. So our framework looks at an organization from A to Z, everything from your hiring and termination procedures to what type of controls you have from a physical and environmental perspective, to third parties to disaster recovery and beyond. So it's a really, really comprehensive framework that just happens to be mapped to 46 other sources that once you do your high trust assessment, you can report out against those other 46 sources. So think about HIPAA as one obvious, multiple flavors of NIST, GDPR, ISO, PCI, and a whole multitude of other uh, frameworks, regulations, and, and uh, security control bases in order to demonstrate your compliance against them all instead of in one assessment as opposed to having to do multiple assessments based on the industries that you're working in and, oh, by the way, what people are asking you for. So it's a way of what we call assessing once and reporting many, um, and it's proved its its weight in gold, I think, uh, with helping organizations not only be able to assess once and report many, but actually get better. Um, the shared responsibilities matrix, I personally believe, is one of the nuggets of gold that High Trust offers that really no other framework uh, in the world offers, uh, so I'm excited to jump into it. No, and yes, it, it is super helpful, and I look forward to, to talking about it more today. Um, and, you know, is AWS High Trust certified? Yes. Certain AWS services have been assured under the High Trust CSF, 
They have been independently assessed by a high trust certified uh, CSF assessor as meeting the high trust uh, CSF certification criteria. And we're currently at version uh, 9.6. So you can deploy your environments onto AWS and you may, may be able to inherit our high trust controls though, provided though you are using um, InScope services and apply the controls detailed within the high trust CSF. So to, to, to determine like what Ryan was saying, uh, those controls that AWS customers can inherit and those that are shared, AWS worked with High Trust to create the shared responsibility matrix that is now available on the High Trust site. Um, and I think the new one uh, is was up a April 2022, um, version 1.2. So, and additionally, customers can also view and download our AWS High Trust certification letter um, from the AWS Artifact Service. It's important to talk about shared responsibility when we talk about High Trust. Um, just as AWS is High Trust certified, Customers that need to be high trust certified will have to go through the same process. And it is important that customers understand which components they are responsible for within the scope of services that comprise their environment. And this is where the AWS high trust um, shared responsibility matrix or SRM and the AWS shared responsibility model can help. So as you see here, you know, the AWS shared responsibility model and everybody's probably seen this, it defines what you as an AWS account holder or user and what AWS are responsible for when it comes to security and compliance. So broadly described, you know, AWS is responsible for security of the cloud. So we're protecting the infrastructure, the hardware, the software, the networking and the facilities that help run the AWS cloud. And the AWS customers are responsible for the security in the cloud. So that, that means uh, you know, the security controls based on services or applications deployed in the AWS cloud, including you know, uh, customer data, uh, operating systems, net, uh, network and firewall, and client side and server side encryption. So um, one way to look at this is you know, like a homeowners association. Um, AWS is responsible for those common areas, that infrastructure, the construction of public amenities and street access. And then the customer, they're ultimately responsible for securing their home, the, the home's contents, the maintenance of that home, and who has access to it and ensuring only the proper people enter that home. So, and it's also, I also wanna note that it all depends on the, the services that you're using inside your environment too. So depending on the service, you know, the, it determines the amount of configuration work a customer must perform as part of their security responsibilities. So if you're using you know, EC2, your responsibilities will be different uh, over if you're using uh, S3. So that th those responsibilities vary. And then I have, I have to mention here our partners because this is where our partners play a huge part in this. Um, AWS partners you know, such as Cloudticity, they can help you fulfill those security responsibilities through their solutions and consulting services as well. For instance, Cloudticity, they are high trust certified and they offer their automated platform and that enforces additional numerous um, technical controls. And since they are responsible for the implementation of those controls, the customer can then inherit them. Now I wanna turn it over to uh, Jerry and Ryan to discuss the high trust uh, shared responsibility matrix. Sure, so I'll, I'll jump in first and, and Jerry, feel free to at any color commentary as I go. Uh, the shared responsibility matrix is, is designed to do exactly what it sounds like, is define what shared responsibilities are in a cloud environment as Cheryl has laid out. And, and it's it was developed in partnership with the cloud service providers so that organizations clearly have a path forward on what controls they're responsible, responsible for and what controls their service providers are responsible for. And where this really becomes important uh, from a high trust perspective is high trust doesn't allow what's called carve outs. So we want a comprehensive look at the environment that has been attested to and tested uh, and validated so that when that certification report is issued, the, the consumer of that report doesn't have to guess what's happening in the cloud environment because it wasn't in scope of the assessment. High Trust wants a comprehensive picture. And what this does is it provides an assessed entity, the entity getting certified, 
the ability to attest on things they actually don't have any control over. And that's where what Cloudticity and AWS are doing provides tremendous value. And, and we're gonna talk about this in a bit more detail um, further along in the conversation, but it's a huge time saver. So you couple the, the fact that you're getting a clear, comprehensive picture of the environment from a security and privacy perspective, you couple that with being a time saver. To me, that's why I said earlier, it's, it's really a golden nugget. It's the genius uh, built into the high trust methodology. Jerry, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Any additional comments? Yeah, so um, thank you for that, Ryan. Uh, Cloudticity was fortunate actually to participate with High Trust and uh, a number of other uh, organizations, including AWS, on the Shared Responsibility uh, Working Group. Uh, and, and the reason the group was convened was to address the evolution of how um, technology and, and computing services work. Um, back when High Trust was conceived, uh, companies owned data centers and all of their computing and all of their applications sat within the four walls of um, areas where they had full control. Uh, as cloud computing um, became a viable platform and became ever more popular, uh, much of the um, controls or many of the controls that High Trust covered were now relegated to third parties, the cloud service providers. Uh, and if you think about the way modern applications are developed, um, they're really distributed and some of the application components your organization might own but you may subscribe to third-party SaaS providers that your application calls out to. And so um, as applications increasingly grew to be managed by multiple organizations, many of which are out of control of the assessed entity, um, it became increasingly difficult to build an, a, a scope that was accessible by high trust. And that was the genesis of the shared responsibility working group and ultimately the shared responsibility model. Yeah, so um, the shared responsibility matrix is an evolution of the shared responsibility model. Um, shared responsibility model allowed uh, various um, partners to declare which of their con uh, controls were uh, um, inheritable by their customers, but there was no definitive guide that indicated globally um, what should be inheritable, how should it be inheritable, if it's partially inheritable, uh, what does that shared responsibility look like? Um, and so, you know, again, Cloudticity and many others worked uh, directly uh, with High Trust to develop the shared responsibility matrix, which is a uh, Excel-based tool published by the High Trust organization that um, consolidates and uh, standardizes the way that um, we can look at a set of controls and determine what should and shouldn't be inheritable and to what extent. Um, and we were one of the first outside of the um, outside of the major cloud players, um, and I, you know I, I, we're we're great, grateful to see other organizations uh, joining along as well, because this um, tool drastically simplifies uh, a customer's ability to determine and plan ahead uh, what they'll be able to inherit, and and therefore um, assess ahead of time what their savings will be as they achieve high trust um, attestation in terms of time, cost, and any internal disruption as they're generating the evidence necessary uh, for their assessment. Wonderful. I, for the remaining time that we have, though, I want to ask both of you a few questions so we can dive a little deeper into, you know, shared responsibility and high trust. Um, and, you know, this is, these are some questions that, you know, my team gets uh, pretty often about um, high trust and, and the inheritance process so so Ryan I guess how does how does the SRM work when you know say a customer is you know is going for version 9.6 of high trust CSF but they're utilizing um, like the AWS 9.4 SRM how does how does that work when when they're implementing different versions of high trust yeah, that's a great question. And, um, you know, truthfully, it was uh, not as clean as it probably should have been for a little while. Um, if you, as an example, were getting assessed on 9.3 and AWS and Cloudicity were on 9.6, the controls, although the CSF is generally the same, it's the same set of controls, but the mappings may be different based on updates to the authoritative sources or new threat uh, tactics that may change the controls uh, a bit. There 
there may have been a little negotiation that had to have happened and a little manual work that had to have happened to be able to pull in uh, the appropriate inheritance uh, based on the discrepancy in the two versions. I'm happy to, to report that that is since fixed. Um, based on the last slide, you will see that um, the, the image in the bottom left corner refers to supported versions and it, it basically outlines for Cloudtricity's SRM that you, they're backwards compatible, I think, all the way down to 9.1. So the inheritance piece, as it applies to the different versions, is much cleaner now, and you're able to pull the actual testing results from their assessment into your assessment. And that's not something I, I dug in on, but I think it's really important to understand that this is not just a, a check the box activity where it's just like, oh, Cloudtricity is, you know, they did great on this environmental control you're actually getting to, to look at what control is in place and, and the maturity of that control. So it's also giving you insight into what's happening within the environment that your uh, platform is being hosted, which I think is really strong. It's really compelling and it really gives the transparency that we as um, an industry, and I use that as a very broad term, need in order to strengthen uh, our general security posture. So. Um, I, I guess that's a long way, long winded way of saying, Cheryl, that um, it should be pretty easy. It's, it's a matter of a couple of button clicks within our uh, web based platform called MyCSF, and it, it does really all the work for you. Hey, I like when something does the work for me. You know, <laughs> work smart, not hard, right? <laughs> right. So, so, Jerry, how have you seen the SRM simplify? Because you're on this from both sides, right? You're on this from the AWS side, you're inheriting some of our controls, and then you're doing this for your customers. So how have you seen the SRM simplify, you know, the high trust process for Cloudtricity and then for your customers utilizing the Oxygen platform? Yeah, it, it's a great observation, Cheryl. So, so we, we do see it for both sides. So as we plan our assessments, and we're in the middle of planning for our next one, um, having zero ambiguity about which controls we'll be able to inherit and how completely we can um, we can uh, operate on that inheritance um, from our partners like AWS is critical in our planning cycle um, around how many controls do we have to take responsibility for, uh, what is that gonna cost, how, how many people internally do we have to allocate, how long is it gonna take? All of these questions are drastically simplified as we plan for our assessments um, because of the SRM, the shared responsibility matrix. Conversely, the same is true for our customers. Um, prior to the shared responsibility matrix, uh, when customers would say, how many controls can we inherit from you? Uh, you know, the answer was, I don't know, let's dig in and find out together. But it, it was somewhat of a manual exercise to map our customer scope to our scope and which controls match. And if they were attesting to a different version of the CSF than us, we would have to kind of guess around that impedance mismatch. And again, the shared responsibility matrix, the SRM, has absolute, absolutely removed that ambiguity. So for us to sell to our customers, it actually shortens our sales cycles because there's no ambiguity around what value we're going to provide from day one as, as our customer moves toward their, their high trust journey. Um, and it also removes ambiguity dur during our customers' high trust process um, because they have a tool that tells them exactly how they can leverage the high trust work that we've done internally at Cloudtricity. And, and Cheryl, if I could, if I can jump in and just Absolutely. add, because I, I don't, I don't know if people at this point in the conversation realize the amount of effort that goes into building the shared responsibilities matrix. Um, it takes a tremendous amount of effort, especially if you, and I'm, I'm going to use AWS as an example, with all the services that AWS has in its you know, portfolio, each one of those has to be considered when it comes to the individual controls and whether the responsibility is fully on AWS, partially or completely on the customer's uh, plate. So, I mean, I applaud Cloudtricity and AWS for that work because it is no small undertaking, but I feel just that it provides such value. And to your point, Jerry, when you're working with your external assessor to try to figure out timelines, when can we get certified? How much remediation work do we have to do? All of this stuff prior to the shared responsibilities matrix was very, very manual, and it could really draw out the entire process 
this is definitely simplified and, and gave much more clarity and transparency to all parties involved. Um, my last question that I want to um, ask is, you know, we have the high trust CSF and we have um, the shared responsibility matrix, but then customers also, re you know, re that require adherence to, you know, different frameworks like SOC 2 or ISO or NIST. How does how does the C how does high trust CSF and the SRM help customers with that? Yeah, so that's that's actually a really great question, um, and it kind of it kind of digs under the covers, if you will, a bit uh, with what the high trust is ultimately trying to do, which is the assess once, report many. What the SRM is doing is um, again providing a level of transparency to the assessment to raise the level of assurance in the relying party's mind about what is going on. And if you look back or you look to the internet to see what mappings are out there, there's basically a mapping to everything available on the internet in some way, shape or form. But what you're doing, if you say you take a NIST uh, 853 and try to map it to an ISO 27001, is are the details for those controls that you don't have control over. So the fact that we have the SRM in place and then we're able to report out because we've done all the mappings um, to all these different authoritative sources really changes the game with that level of transparency and raising the level of assurance to ensure that organizations on either side of, of the coin have a good sense of what is actually happening because the, the days of saying, here's my security information, I'm not gonna share it because I don't know what you're gonna do with it are over. The, the, the bad guys and gals out there, they've, they've figured it out. And if we're not willing to collaborate and work together, then it's only gonna cause additional pain. So I feel like leveraging the SRM and leveraging the high trust CSF provides that level of transparency and assurance. And, and what that looks like for an end customer is that because HITRUST has done so much work in collaboration with partners like AWS, Cloudtricity, and, and many others, um, they've built a tool that uh, you know, virtually guarantees end-to-end um, -end assurance toward um, a common framework for looking at security that, that ties together 46 other frameworks, ISO 27001, NIST 853, et cetera. Um, and because of that high degree of fidelity, we at Cloudtricity have been able to build a tool that lets our customers look at their current footprint in a number of lenses. So if they wanna see their HIPAA compliance, um, they can just, pull down a, a, a box and select HIPAA, and all of the mappings are, are uh, in the back end. Um, and so we rearrange the view in real time uh, with a view toward HIPAA compliance. We can do it toward high trust compliance, toward NIST 853 compliance, toward NIST cybersecurity framework compliance. So whatever framework a customer wants to look at their current security posture in, because of the work that high trust has done, we're able to show that to the end customer in real time they're able to use that to sell their products to their customers, to attest to various auditors. Um, so, so the benefit of that work and, and how it helps our end customers achieve their goals uh, more quickly with a high degree of assurance, um, it, it, the feedback that we get is, is that provides a tremendous amount of value. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone wants to see their security posture, you know, all the time, continuous yeah. monitoring and everything else. So. It's incredibly beneficial. Um, I want to thank you both today for joining us. Um, and I want to thank everyone that tuned in today. Um, and definitely, we're going to follow this up with a part two and part three of AWS Cloudtricity and High Trust series. So join us for, our, for part two.